Hello friends, welcome to another episode by Engineering Today, and hope you're having a good time. Today we have four space updates to share. First update tells us about the new Super Heavy Booster hardware rollout by SpaceX. Then we'll cover all the details regarding SpaceX's cargo launch. After that, we'll talk about SpaceX's partnership with Axiom Space, and then we'll move on to our last update in which Lockheed Martin gets a $1 billion contract. Let's begin today's space updates with SpaceX's Starship Booster hardware rollout. For the first time, SpaceX has recently rolled out their Starship Booster hardware to the Texas launch pad. Much of the designs for Super Heavy Boosters have changed and evolved with time. Thus, SpaceX has scrapped BN-1, first Starship Booster ever built, reducing it to a production pathfinder. SpaceX then focused on the stacking of the first flight-worthy Super Heavy Booster. Now they've officially delivered the first Super Heavy Booster hardware to the launch pad for passing it through a series of qualification tests, specifically stress tests on the hydraulic ramp. The booster is a test tank named BN 2.1. The test tank is the eighth self-made test tank built by SpaceX. SpaceX started building custom-built tanks one and a half years ago, but this BN 2.1 is the first to come for a test. Presence of BN 2.1 really proves that SpaceX has got a reliable design for their Starship's first stage booster, which is worthy for test and perhaps for future builds. SpaceX has also tested earlier the full-scale prototypes of the hydraulic ram, which will be used for testing the Starships. Now will be used for testing the test tanks. It will help for carrying out stress tests of the tanks and also to find loopholes in the design, if any, which haven't been noticed earlier. It's now quite probable that SpaceX will put the first flight-worthy booster through a similar thrust puck stress test. SpaceX has already scheduled road closures on the 7th of June, Monday, between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time for testing activities of BN 2.1. It's worth noting that Starship has only a maximum of six engines, but Super Heavy will have initially 29, then eventually 32 engines thus nearly five times increase in stress. As a result, Super Heavy will need some different thrust structures. Super Heavy will also need a larger transfer tube to feed larger amounts of fuels to engines. Let's begin our next update. SpaceX once again showed us no lag in work as it successfully launched the CRS-22 cargo mission and nailed the rocket landing. On Thursday, June 3rd, SpaceX's two-staged Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center at about 1.29 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, marking 22nd cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. This is a major resupply mission for both SpaceX and NASA. In this mission, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft carried more than 7,300 pounds, that's 3,311 kilograms of cargo, and most of its material is extremely important for future experiments. The cargo includes multiple scientific experiments like baby squids, water bears, and hardware such as two new solar arrays, which will help boost the space station's power. NASA's ISS program manager, Joe Montalbano, stated, The new solar array is bringing us back to a power generation that was the same as we had when we launched the older solar arrays. It allows us to continue the science and research programs we have on board. The cargo also includes saliva and oral bacteria from dental patients, toothpaste, and mouthwash for an experiment to keep astronauts' teeth and gums healthy. One of SpaceX's booster recovery drone ships, called Of Course I Still Love You, was stationed in the Atlantic Ocean in order to recover another booster. About nine minutes after liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage booster conducted a perfect landing on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship. Picture perfect landing for this Falcon 9 marking its first landing. Siva Bharadvaj, SpaceX engineer, stated on the launch broadcast, 86 landing overall for SpaceX. The launch supported a brand new Falcon 9 first stage. It's not often we get to see SpaceX using a new Falcon 9 booster. We're actually surprised when we get to a mission like today's where we're flying a new booster, stated Sarah Walker, director of Dragon Mission Management at SpaceX. The new booster, called B-1067, is already assigned to its next mission to launch Crew-3 astronauts to the space station later this year. The new booster conducted a static fire test at SpaceX's McGregor test site, but skipped the static test at the launch pad prior to this launch. 
As per that, Walker said, SpaceX and NASA worked together to determine that an additional static fire at the pad wasn't necessary for this mission. We certainly made sure that we do all the necessary tests to make sure that the vehicle is ready for its journey. About 40 hours later, on Saturday, SpaceX's Dragon cargo spacecraft conducted an autonomous docking to the space station. The docking took place at the zenith or space-facing side of the station's Harmony module. It was a great approach, stated NASA astronaut Shane Kimbra. Looking forward to all the science and to her goodies that it brought up along with our EVA solar rays. It's going to be a great few weeks as we get into Dragon and get things out. We know SpaceX had an outstanding number of launches in the previous year. This year's no exception. It's only June and SpaceX already conducted its 17th rocket of the year. Moving on to our next update, which is based on SpaceX's contract with Axiom Space. Texas-based space company Axiom Space has recently purchased three additional Crew Dragon contracts from SpaceX. The company previously signed a deal with SpaceX for its AX-1 mission to the space station. Considering that, Axiom Space now has four private astronaut missions in their hands. On Wednesday, June 2nd, Axiom Space announced the additional three contracts. However, the company did not say anything about the terms and conditions, including the cost of these contracts. Bo Holder, an Axiom representative, said that the benefit of these contracts are to ensure the access of SpaceX's Crew Dragon for future missions. It secures a vehicle that is flight-proven and ready to support the crewed launch cadence Axiom is planning. Approximately every six or seven months leading up to near the launch of the first Axiom module to ISS, he stated. Expanding this partnership between two key industry leaders cements the commercialization of low Earth orbit. Last month, Axiom discussed the final agreement with NASA regarding the AX-1 mission, which is scheduled to launch early next year. This mission includes former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, along with three customers, Larry Connor, Mark Pathy, and Eitan Stibb. Regarding SpaceX's contract with Axiom Space, Gwyn Shotwell stated, We're beyond excited to build upon our partnership with Axiom to help make human spaceflight more accessible for more people. A new era in human spaceflight is here. Let's move to our last segment of today's space update, in which Lockheed Martin gets a $1 billion contract. On the 4th of June 2021, the U.S. Space Force publicized that Lockheed Martin had received a contract worth $1 billion. According to the contract, Lockheed Martin will have to control and carry out thorough maintenance of the ground control system of the U.S. military's space-based infrared system, geostationary satellites. The space-based infrared system is part of the Defense Department's missile warning network, which helps in finding out ballistic missile launches. This infrared system comprises a unique blend of five satellites deployed in geosynchronous Earth orbit, along with two infrared sensors, which are deployed in highly elliptical orbit. According to the Director of Overhead Persistent Infrared Operations and Sustainment at Lockheed Martin, Rob Walker, this contract takes into all the strategic support for the remaining ground systems and also the modifications needed to control the satellites SBIRS Geo 5 and SBIRS Geo 6 of this infrared system geosynchronous constellation. Walker further added that this new contract will help to maintain and sustain infrastructure for the future operationally resilient ground evolution ground control system, a next-gen ground system which is also known as FORGE. The Space Force wants to shift to this ground system. They also want to take up a new network of missile warning satellites called Next Generation Overhead Persistent Infrared. Since 1990, Lockheed Martin has been the main contractor for the program of space-based infrared system. On the 18th of May this year, the fifth missile warning satellite, SBIRS Geo 5, was launched by ULA. Following up that launch, the sixth and final SBIRS, SBIRS Geo 6, is undergoing manufacturing procedures. SBIRS Geo 6 is targeted to launch in the year 2022. This present contract spans for a time period of five years. Lockheed Martin will now operate and manage the SBIRS Mission Control Center at Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado. 
they'll take charge of other operations centers, namely the Greeley Air National Guard Station and Peterson Air Force Base. Lockheed Martin will manufacture three next-gen overhead persistent infrared geosynchronous satellites. By 2025, the first of them will be launched. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.